Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the revelation of yourself in the Word. Thank you because this Word is infallible. This Word is complete. And everything we need for spirit, soul, and body, everything we need for life on earth, and to get to peace with you here on earth and enter eternity peacefully, you have committed unto us and you have revealed unto us in this world. We're asking, Lord, that as you have revealed your heart, your mind, your message to us, we'll take the word serious and every benefit we have in the world, we will lay claim to, they'll be ours in Jesus' name. Once again, we're asking that your spirit will put the word in our heart today and that your spirit will so explain, expound to us personally so that we'll get the greatest benefit from your word and a permanent benefit to you. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we come to an important section of the word of God. It's in Mark chapter 16. We're looking at the last four verses of the chapter. Actually, the last four verses of the gospel according to St. Mark. Open your Bible to Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And then it goes on in verse 18. It says, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And then in verse 19 it says, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20 says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. Amen. As we look at these verses today, the subject we're dealing with is supernatural signs following believers till the end. Every word is important there in that topic. Supernatural signs. The signs shall follow them that believe. Supernatural signs following believers, them that believe. Was that only for the first century? Only for the first apostles? No, it is to the end of the world, till the end. And so as you look at the world today, study the world today, you want to find out what are the supernatural signs that ought to follow you as a believer until this time and until the end of your life and until the end of the age, until the end of this dispensation. It's until Christ comes again for the saints. Supernatural signs following believers till the end. There are three parts of the message. We have divided the message to, number one, the spectacular source of faith for steadfast believers. Number two, the supernatural signs that follow serving believers. And number three, the sovereign support of faithfulness in selfless believers. Let's come to point number one. In point number one, that's the spectacular source of faith for steadfast believers. We're coming to Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name shall they speak with new tongues. Everything we do now in the ministry, everything we do in the service of the Lord, as the signs are expected to follow us, one, we are believers. Because the signs follow them that believe. 
And it says, every sin is in the name of the Lord. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name shall they speak. In my name shall they preach. In my name shall they behave. In my name shall they do. In my name shall they accomplish all things I've given them to accomplish. We're looking at one, the power of his name. We're looking at two, the possibilities in his name. And we're looking at number three, our privilege under his name. Because it says all these supernatural signs will follow us up because of his name. That means the inner, the spectacular source of our faith in everything we do is the name of the Lord. Number one, the power of his name. Actually, as you look at John chapter 1, reading from verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him. To them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's the very first step we take. We come to the Lord, we leave our sins behind, and we totally bar our sins from our lives. We repent and we turn fully to the Lord, and we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord, as our Savior as a substitute and it says as many as received him the savior to them all of them without exception to you and to me and to everyone that believes on the name of the lord it says to them he gave power to become the sons of god even to them look at this now even to them that believe on his name if you have believed on his name that's the power of sonship you become a child of God. And the nature of Christ comes into you. Look at Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 12. In Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 12, it says, But when they believe uh, Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, that's what Philip preached, the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as Savior, the only way and the only source of salvation, Jesus Christ. Then it says they were baptized, both men and women. It's your privilege that you can believe on the name of the Lord Jesus that he died for you. He buried and your sins were buried with him. And he rose again triumphantly. And because of that, you can now be justified. You can now be saved. And total salvation comes unto you. And let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. Now that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, see what has happened. It says, and such were some of you. It's talking about the past sins of the people. But it says now, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your sins are cleansed away. Your sins are washed away. You are justified in the sight of the Lord. You are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He even sanctifies us and sanctifies our heart, makes our heart holy because we believe on the name of the Lord Jesus. Now that we're coming to the kingdom through the name of Jesus Christ, how are we sustained in the kingdom? And what are the possibilities we have in the name of Jesus? Let's come back to uh, chapter 16 of Mark, verse 17. We're looking at the possibilities in his name. The possibilities in his name. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And if you're a believer, these signs shall follow you because you believe. If you're a believing preacher, as you preach, these signs shall follow all the believing preachers. If you're a real child of God, a prayerful child of God, these signs shall follow them, the believer, while they pray, in my name shall they cast out devils. And then he lists a number of things that will happen as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ. Actually, there is a lot. That when we talk of the possibilities in the name of Jesus, there's a lot. Uh, let, look at this in John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. He's giving us confidence. He's giving us faith. He's giving us trust in the name that can never fail. It says, Verily, verily, assuredly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. All you need is to believe on him. You know that all things are possible with him. All things are possible in his name. And because of that, he that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he do also. The works that I do, shall he do also. What work did he do? He opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to walk. He healed the sick. He delivered the oppressed. He saved people. He brought them into the kingdom. He taught the word of God. And it says, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. How does that happen? How can that happen through you? How can that happen through me? How can that happen through every one of us to believe on him? Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that's the source, whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that's the secret, whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, actually is the one that is still doing it. He that believeth on me, these works shall he do that I have done. And he is the one that continues to do that work because we believe on his name. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's the reason why he's giving us the use of that name. He's giving us the power of his name. It says in verse 14, in verse 14 it says, if, she shall, if ye shall ask anything in my name, in my name, underline that, in my name, understand that. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's the name of the Lord. In chapter 15, John chapter 15, reading from verse 16. Again, he gives us the assurance and he says, it is because of his name that those things will happen. He says in John chapter 15, verse 16, ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you, praise the Lord, you are chosen, you are born again, you are a child of God, and you have the testimony of the Spirit bearing witness in your heart that you are a child of God, it's because they are chosen you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you and put you in place and have appointed you. And he says that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, and that whatsoever, here is the promise again, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, that he may give it you, that he will give it unto you. It's through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer, it's through the name in preaching, it's through the name in receiving from the Lord, it's through the name in having all these signs following after us, it's through the name that whatsoever he shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. In chapter 16 of John, reading from verse 23, John chapter 16, verse 23, and he says, and in that day, he shall ask me nothing is seen. We don't ask him directly, but we ask the Father. But his name comes in as we're asking the Father. The Father is wanting to know what authority do you have? What grounds do you have? And what was the basis of your asking? That's why Jesus explained very well. And he says in that day, what, that, what day is that? The day when he will not be physically present with us. It's like this day, it's like this period, it's like this time. And, and in that day, he shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever 
underline that whatsoever actually the blessings we have in the authority of the name of Jesus that blessing is unlimited because it says whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name look at this he will give it to you God will answer our prayer as we ask him in the name of our substitute in the name of our savior in the name of his only begotten son he cannot say no to him and if he cannot say no to him he will not say no to us because we are asking in the name that cannot fail in the name that holds the key on earth and in heaven remember once again whatsoever he shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He shall ask whether you are an apostle or whether you are an evangelist, you are a pastor, you are a teacher, or whether you are a believer, whether you are a new convert or an old time believer, a new creature in Christ whatsoever, ye shall ask the Father in my name, the Father will give it to you. That's a privilege. Look at number three now. Our privilege under his name. The privilege we have, the power of authority we have, and the power of attorney that we have is the privilege of everyone. You know why? Because Jesus obtained the greatest name the whole universe can ever think of. Our privilege under his name in Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. God also has highly exalted our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and given him a name which is above every name. Understand that. Let that sink into your mind. Let that sink into your memory. Let that sink into your heart that Christ has been given a name which is above every name. Above every name on earth, above every name in heaven, above every name anywhere, everywhere. He has given him a name which is above every name. Look at verse 10 now. In verse 10 it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. It says, in any realm, in any place, above or beneath or on earth, that the name of Jesus is higher, the name of Jesus is greater, the name of Jesus has the final abounding power and authority over everything. Jesus has a name above any sickness, above any infirmity, above any personality, above anything or anyone in heaven, anything, anyone on earth, anything, anyone on the, the earth. That's why we have the privilege of calling upon that name. But you know, we don't just uh, act or relate with the name when we want to pray. Every area of our lives is actually taken up by glorifying that name. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 17, it tells us there that whatsoever ye do in word or deed, you see that whatsoever, he already told us, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. You ask the Father whatsoever, there is no limit, there is no restraint, there is no confinement, and there is, uh, there is no gauging. You cannot ask this, you cannot ask that. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. But now, look at the implication. It says in verse 17 here, and whatsoever ye do, in word or deed. You see, when you make everything in your life, when you make every area of your life, when you make every decision of your life to come under the authority of the name of Jesus, then everything you ask in prayer will also be given. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name 
of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That verse, my brother, my sister, is very important. You see, there are many people, they do not take care of everything they do, whatsoever they do, whatever word, whatever deed, they don't think of doing all in the name of Jesus. Let me just paint a picture before you now. Somebody is going to pray. And he wants to pray and he's standing on the promise of God whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And then before that prayer, you say, Whatsoever I ask, whatsoever I demand, whatsoever I, I ask in prayer, the Lord will give me. But before that prayer, you may fight, you may do evil a lie, I mean, do things that you're asking now, what you have said now, the lie you have told now, the anger you manifested now, and the violence you manifested now, could you do that in the name of the Lord Jesus? Obviously not. Drunkenness, you get drunk, I'm not talking about you, I'm just, you know, talking about people who are praying, 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 but they do not understand that they have to bring their life under the authority of the name of Christ. And then they get drunk, or maybe they cheat, or they change their receipts, or whatever, and then you cannot do that in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is why. The whatsoever we ask the Lord in prayer, that's why the whatsoever is not accomplishing many people. You must have the basis, you must have the background of doing whatsoever, of saying whatsoever, of living in whatsoever you live, you do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. It is on that basis then we're able to come confidently and we're able to come convincingly before the Lord. We're able to come with faith, unshakable faith, and whatsoever we ask in that name, it is done. That's why it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, Verse 19, it tells us, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Look at this, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Actually, he helps us. He makes us, he helps us to repent if we really want to repent. And then he grants us the faith to believe that our repentance is acceptable of the Lord. And he forgives us because of his name. He redeems us because of his name. He cleanses us, he washes us because of his name. And then with that cleansing, with that conversion, and with that uh, conduct and character in the name of the Lord, that he gives us the privilege to say that we're children of God. He gives us the power to labor by the name of the Lord. And whatsoever we do, whatsoever we say, we do everything by the name of the Lord and in his name we depart from every iniquity and then when we pray the Lord answers because whatsoever you ask in that name it will grant unto you let's come to point number two now point number two the supernatural signs that follow serving believers we're coming back to Mark chapter 16 Verse 17, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, no other name, in my name, not the name of uh, the founder of a church, in my name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, not in the name of Paul, not in the name of uh, saints, such and such, but in the name of the Lord alone, in my name shall they cast out devils, these are the supernatural signs. When he said these signs shall follow them that believe. These are the signs. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, They shall take up serpents, 
That means they'll throw serpents away, they will take away serpents and their satanic serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There are five things there. Number one, casting out evil spirit, casting out devils. You see that verse 17, it says, they shall cast out devils. That's what he did. And now we can stand in his place. And what he did, the works I do, he shall do. What works did he do? He cast out devils. And he's giving us now that same opportunity and that same authority and that same power because the devils recognize the power, the authority in the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17, the Lord had sent out 70 disciples and he gave them the power, he gave them authority to cast out devils. And he tells us in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name, through thy name. That same name is at work today. If there is any demonic oppression, if they send demonic infiltration, if they send any demonic possession, anything done by the devil, you can come and you can go in the name, in the power of the name, in the anointing that goes with the name of Jesus. And they, that's what they did. And they said, even the devils are subject unto us, through thy name, it is still possible today as we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus and we manifest authority in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 16, reading from verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination that's a demon, that's an evil spirit, a spirit of divination. She met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying, pretended, um, you know, kind of prophecy and pretended kind of a speech coming from a spirit and all that that will suit people. But in verse 17, it says in verse 17, the same followed Paul and us. And cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Look at the power of the name of Jesus now to cast out devils. In verse 18, in verse 18, it says, And they she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, not angry, sad, sorrowful, that the devil will make somebody to follow after them and pointing them out and wanting to mix up, uh, you know, the message of Christ and the message of the devil and wanting to gather people through the power of a demon. And so Paul was grieved in his heart and he turned and said to the spirit, not to the lady, not to the damsel, you are, not, uh, you are not unhappy with anybody. You are not grieved for anyone. And you are not uh, hurting anyone. Paul the apostle turned and said to the spirit, I command thee, look at this, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name. And that name will never lose its power. Whether at the time of Paul, at the time of Peter, or at this time, your own time, whether it is the name from the mouth of Paul or from your own name, it says, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Tell me what you'll find in your Bible there after that. And he came the same hour, and he came out the same hour. I don't close that verse. You know, it was a damsel, a she, that did this many days, but it was a he that was living inside that damsel, and it says, and he came out the same hour. You know, sometimes you'll find a demon-possessed person, 
having such great power and such authority and such boldness and such uh, audacity. And you wonder, how can a lady be so bold like this? It's not her, it's a he. It's an evil spirit. It's a demonic power that is engineering all those things. And then she can be so bold as she, at least she was masculine. But it is the power of the spirit inside her. And it says he, that evil spirit, that demon came out the same hour. And you know, Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. That name has not changed. As we come back to Mark chapter 16, verse 17, you find the signs that will follow believers. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Number one, shall they cast out devils. Number two, in my name shall they speak with new tongues. The miracle of a new tongue. And the speaking forth of a new tongue given by the Spirit of God. I'm sure you know that this happened on the day of Pentecost. And it says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, reading from verse 1. It says in Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They had been saved. And they were with one accord in one place. They were united. They were sanctified. They were with one accord in one place. And then it says in verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. When there is no disunity, when there is no discord, when there is no conflict, when there is no infighting, when there is no disagreement one with the other, when there is no depravity, when there is no place seeking, when we're sanctified and we're all one, united, united in doctrine and united in the message of the word of God, united in spirit, united in heart, then anywhere we are united like that, already Jesus is there with two or three are gathered in my name, united. I am there in their midst. And now the promise of Pentecost and the promise, the power of Pentecost will be fulfilled in our lives. Suddenly there came a son from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And then verse 3 were told of what happened and there appeared unto them cloving tongues like as of fire, the fire that will burn every chaff, the fire that will burn every redundant thing. It came like tongues of fire and sat on each of them. And now in verse 4, look at verse 4. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The Lord had promised you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. He had told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they were endued, until they were endowed, until they were enveloped by the Spirit of God, because that is the promise of the Father. And now the promise were fulfilled because they gathered in his name, because they prayed in his name, because whatsoever they did within those 10 days after he ascended up on high and they were waiting, they were waiting in the name of the Lord, praying in the name of the Lord. And because whatsoever they did was done in the name of the Lord, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You are asking, can it happen today? Yes, it continues to happen when we're saved and when we're sanctified and when we do everything, we consecrate to the name of the Lord. We act in the name of the Lord. We live by the name of the Lord. We believe in the name of the Lord and we hold on to the promise he has given us in the name of the Lord. Which you will be filled with the Holy Ghost, and if you have not experienced it, you'll be baptized and you will speak with other tongues 
as the Spirit will give you utterance. Not as a Pentecostal preacher and say, say this after me, but as the Spirit himself will give utterance. It is still valid today, and the Lord is still doing it today. As we come to Mark chapter 16, verse 18, then he tells us, they shall take up serpents. That's number three now, destroying Satan's serpents. He gives us the power, and he gives us the authority and the ability to destroy all the serpents of Satan. You know, somebody says, uh, something is walking about in my body like a serpent. I always see serpent in the dream. Even during the day, others may not see it. And, you know, I see this, I see that. There's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all those serpentine spirits will be cast out of your life if they have bothered you from today they'll not bother you anymore in Jesus name and when it says to take up this is not for sure this is not like you know magicians uh, do or like uh, the, the preachers or the religious leaders, clergies of the idol worship uh, people, they want to demonstrate demonic power and then they carry serpents and they um, put serpents on their neck. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the serpentine spirit, the serpents of Satan, because even Satan himself is referred to as serpent. And it says, when this name of Jesus fills your heart, you have a story and power in this name of Jesus they shall take up serpents look at this in Luke chapter 10 we're reading from verse 19 Luke chapter 10 we're reading from verse 19 it says behold I give unto you power remember these were the seven disciples that came back from the evangelistic field and they said even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and now Jesus completed the power and Jesus Jesus increased the authority and Jesus affirmed the anointing he gave to them and he said behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions it's not literal serpent it's not literal a scorpion to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that's what we have in his name. Over all the power of the enemy, we destroy all the powers of the enemy. And then it says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. I thought you would say, amen. Amen. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. In Jesus' name, who has this authority? Who has this power? Look at Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, we're reading from verse 13. Psalm 91, we're reading from verse 13. It says, Thou shalt tread, that's talking about the believer, the one who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, and the one who dwells under the shadow of his wings. It says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall that trample under thy feet. That's the promise he has given us. You live by his name. You walk in his name. You do everything in his name. You sing in his name. You praise in his name. You behave in his name. Under the authority of the name of Jesus, and you're under the canopy, under the umbrella, under the protection of the name of Jesus. It gives you assurance, dragon, lion, adder, whatever. You'll trample upon them. You'll be victorious. They will not trample over you in Jesus' name, destroying Satan's serpents. We'll come back to Mark chapter 16. We're looking at verse 18. It gives us assurance here, total protection from harmful substances. Any substance that you mistakenly take and it's dangerous, it's deadly, it's a poison. Look at the protection he has given you. He says, they shall take off serpents. We've, done, we've uh, taken care of that. And if they drink any deadly sin, if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Now, you understand the construction of that verse. And this is not to tempt the Lord. It doesn't say when 
they drink any dead medicine. It's not, a, you know, going out to say, my friend, come, come here. I have the power now. I have the name of Jesus now. Come and see. I'm going to drink a poison and it will not do anything to me. That one is tempting the Lord. And those who do that, they'll face the consequence of testing the Lord. They might just kill themselves like that and that will be counted as suicide. And that person will go to the eternity of suicide people that are separated from God uh, forever and ever. Look at the word, if they are, if they drink any deadly sin, it's talking about something that happens accidentally. You didn't know anything about that, and you mistakenly drank something you know, that wasn't supposed to be drunk. And it says, because you believe in the name of the Lord, and because you always act in the name of the Lord, you're not acting presumptuously. You are not deliberately doing anything you know, against the word of the Lord. You are not uh, pushing God forward and saying, God, I want to drink this bad thing. You know. Now you come and protect me. You are not sending him forth like your errand boy to do evil and expect that he'll protect you. This happens accidentally. And then it says it will not hurt you. It will not cut short your life that you will still live to the very end of your life and your life will be preserved as well as prolonged in Jesus' name. Number one, already we have learned that we cast out devils. Number two, we have learned we speak with new tongues. Number three, we destroy Satan's serpents. And number four, we are protected from harmful substances. Number five now, healing the sick. Look at what it says in Mark chapter 16, verse 18. They shall take off serpents, take it up, throw it away, take it up, trample on it, destroy it, and then if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They, the believing ones, shall lay hands on the sick, and those who are sick that we lay hands upon shall recover. And that, there's no restriction there. A wife is sick, they shall lay hands on the sick. The husband can lay hands on the wife and she will be healed. A wife, a, a husband is sick and the wife can lay hands on the sick husband and he will recover. The parents are sick and believing children can lay hands on those parents and those parents will recover. The children are sick and their parents can lay hands on them in the name of the Lord. At home, in church, anywhere, it says the sick shall recover or the believer can lay hand on another person. A sick person who is a believer, a sick person who is not a believer, here is the promise of God that cannot fail. This sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the power he has given all believers. And that is the authority he has given all believers. It goes back again to that promise the Lord gave in John chapter 14 verse 12 John chapter 14 verse 12 it says verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me and you are the one he that believeth on me that's a believer whether a man or a woman that's a believer whether young or old he that believeth on me he believes in the past he keeps on believing and at this moment of prayer at this moment of laying hands on the sick he believes he believes on me and then when he has finished the prayer and he has mentioned the name of jesus he doesn't go back to unbelief he keeps on believing i have prayed i've mentioned the name of jesus and the lord said whatsoever i ask in the name he will answer so he keeps on believing he that believeth goes on believing in me on me the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, 
because I go unto my father. And let me ask you a question here. What if you were sick and you happen to be a believer and there's no other believer around and uh, there is no pastor preacher around and then you say, How, what can I do now? Well, you're a believer. A part of that believer is sick. A part of that believer still has the heart and the mind and the promise of God. You lay hands on yourself. Well, what's the, where is the problem? I'm a believer, Lord. And this hand is the hand of a believer. And I'm laying hands on this sick part of the believer. The promise of God will still be fulfilled. It says, greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Believe the Lord, he will answer your prayer. We're looking at James chapter 5, verse 14. In James chapter 5, verse 14, it says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. I want you to understand that when you have opportunity, you can call for the elders of the church. You can call for leaders in the church. You can call for pastors in the church. Actually, when it says elders in the church, it's not talking only about the senior pastor. It's talking about the people who teach us the word of God. And it's not limiting this to, you know, brothers. It's the sisters are also included. Their leaders and elders in the church. And it says, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. But you know, we shouldn't allow one sentence in the Bible, one verse of the Bible to limit us and to restrict us. Somebody is limited and restricted will say, you know, if I can just have my pastor now come to me and then lay hands on me, that's one way. But the centurion said, I am not even worthy that thou Christ shall come into my house. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The elder can still speak the word, and when he spoke the word, the servant of the centurion did not hear, but yet the word of God was fulfilled. But now we can speak the word from a distance, and through telephone you will even hear. And through the gadgets we have, you can even hear. Even if you could not hear, we can pray at a distance. That elder, that believer, that pastor, that evangelist can pray and you can be healed wherever you are. The power of the Lord will roll away every sickness from your body, even today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it tells us, and the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, that's the prayer we pray with faith in the name of Jesus. It's not the prayer of feeling. It's not the prayer of emotion. It's not the prayer of crying. It's not the prayer of force. It's not the prayer of a shouting. It's the prayer of faith. You can manifest faith quietly. Daniel was in the lion's den. He wasn't shouting. You know? He had faith in the Lord that God will protect him. There's quiet faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had faith in the furnace of fire, and they were not born. They were not shouting. They were not screaming. We don't have to shout. If we shout, it's no sin. If we cry aloud, there is no sin. But if we don't shout, if quietly, as Jesus was sleeping, and they woke him up and said, Fairest, a carest thou not that we perish? And the storm was raging, and Jesus just rose up, and without shouting, just said, Peace be still, and was calm. It's the prayer of faith. It's the faith in the prayer, at the very foundation of the prayer that makes a prayer to be answered, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. 
He gives salvation. He gives a healing. And then in verse 16, we're told, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. What that is saying is when you are sick and you have been prayed for by this person, by that person, and yet healing has not come, if you think, if you feel, if you have the conviction that maybe the prayers are not answered, if I hold iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And you remember anything, you will confess to the one that has been offended. And when you confess your faults one to another, pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Before I leave that verse, all of us who pray for people, well, we ought to be praying for one another and we ought to be seeking the face of the Lord, interceding for one another. Everybody ought to pray. But there are people that pray specially for people and they pray every time. And when people have challenges, they call upon them. They are called pastors, they are called overseers, they are called leaders, they are called elders, they are called workers. We must make sure that we are righteous every time. We cannot live carelessly. We live righteously to get to heaven. We also live righteously so that our prayers will be answered. If we live carelessly and then people look up to us and we're praying for them and we're not living righteous life, we might cause the sorrow or the suffering or the pain or even the death of the people we're praying for because God will not answer if we're not doing everything we're doing to the glory of God and in the name of the Lord. But if the Lord has cleansed us and we're living consistently righteous lives, it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We come to point number three now. In point number three, the sovereign support of faithfulness in selfless believers. We're coming to Mark chapter 16, verse 19. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and such on the right hand of God. In verse 20 it says, And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word for signs following. And amen, so let it be, so it was, and so it shall be in our ministry in Jesus' name. And look at three things here. Number one, the sovereign conqueror who is worthy. It says in verse 19, So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God. He sat on the right hand of God. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, Verse 3, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The place of authority, the place of sovereignty, the place of almighty power, and the place of anointing and power, where the Lord is now, who being uh, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, is talking about Christ. Is describing Christ that now he upholds all things, all things in the universe. He upholds all things, all things in the world. He upholds all things, all things in the church. He upholds all things, all things in your personal life. He upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's the, that's the place of power. He is now seated there and he has all authority and all power. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 1 reading from verse 20 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand 
in the heavenly places. That's where Christ is now because he's at that heavenly place, a place of authority and power. He has power over everything, has power over the devil, has power over demons, has power over diseases, has power over anything, everything on earth, in the sky, and underneath the earth. He said, at the right hand of the heavenly father in heavenly places it says in verse 21 in verse 21 far above all principality and power that's where christ is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, every name that is named, the name of any personality, and the name of any sickness, and the name of any affliction, and the name of any situation, and the name of any sinner above, beneath, or on earth. Now he has the authority and the dominion, the power and the might over every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and we're short in verse 22 in verse 22 it says and he has put all things under his feet on your behalf he has put all things under his feet every sickness every disease every affliction every trial every pain, every power, passion, and every pursuit of the enemy. He has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. He has given him to be head over all things because of the church. It tells us in Revelation chapter 4, we're reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 4, we're reading from verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure the earth and were created. Revelation chapter 5, we're reading from verse 9. Revelation chapter 5, reading from verse 9. And he sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Then in verse 10, it says in verse 10, and has made us, has made us, you and I, has made us believers has made us brothers and sisters, has made us the members of the body of Christ, he has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. In verse 11, he gives us the assurance, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, the living creatures, and the elders representing the whole church, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. These are the saints of God, and they were crying unto the Lord. In verse 12, it says in verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. All this position, power, of authority, of supremacy, now belongs to the Lord. And remember, we go in that name. And everything, every victory, every power, every possibility in that name on the one seated on the throne by the right hand of the Heavenly Father, everything in that name is now given to us. Now we come to section two here, the selfless consecration of his watchmen. 
We're coming back to Mark chapter 16, verse 20. It tells us, and they went forth, the believers, and they went forth. He had said, this shall, shall follow them that believe, and nothing follows a person who is standing still. But you have to be moving if something is going to follow, if the power is going to follow, if the authority is going to follow, if the confirmation of the word is going to follow, you have to keep on moving, moving into the field of service. I'm moving into the field of evangelism. I'm moving into the field of preaching the gospel. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. They committed themselves to the work the Lord had given unto them. They went forth. It's not only talking about the apostles. They went forth. It's not only talking about ordained and anointed, appointed uh, preachers in the church. And they went forth. It's talking about everyone, really. It's talking about everyone that has believed going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized, those are the believers, and then it says, as you believe and you are baptized, you are saved. And it says, all those people that believe and they are baptized in water, these are the people, now the signs will follow after them, these signs shall follow them that believe, they are the believers, they are the children of God, they are the sons of God. They have believed and now they have the witness in their spirit, where the children of God. And he says, this son shall follow them. That's the reason why all those believers, without exception, not saying um, I'm just a sister, not saying I'm just a new convert, not saying I'm just an ordinary member, I'm just an ordinary man, everyone, they went forth and preached everywhere. That was their commitment. That was their consecration. And they were selfless in their consecration as witnesses, as watchmen, as the people that went forth to speak the word of the Lord. It tells us in uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter uh, 5, verse 42. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, we're reading from verse 42, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. That's why the signs followed after them. That's why there was a confirmation. That's why there was a supernatural confirmation of the word they were preaching. All those apostles, all those prophets, all those evangelists, all those pastors, all those teachers of the word, all those elders, all those watchmen, all those people that were dividing the word and preaching to everyone, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. It tells us in chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 4, it says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad, these were the believers, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. Every village, they went everywhere. Every city, they went everywhere. Every street of every city, they went everywhere in a systematic way in a purposeful way and in a persuasive way and with all their sacrifice, all their consecration, they were selfless about it and they that were scattered, went, uh, uh, scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word, preaching the word, preaching the word. That was the time Philip now also went to Samaria. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preach Christ unto them is telling us that everywhere we go, we keep on preaching the word, we keep on preaching the word, difficult times, easy time, in the day, in the night, everywhere, up on the hill, down in the valley, everywhere you find yourself, you're a believer. If the signs are going to follow you, if supernatural power is going to follow you, everywhere you are, you'll not keep your mouth shut. You'll go like those early disciples. You'll go everywhere preaching the word. In Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 4, 
reading from verse 2, it tells us, preach the word. That's a command, that's a commission to everyone who names the name of Christ that you belong to the Lord and that you have the authority and the power and the anointing of that name. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort without long suffering and doctrine. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, it tells us, Watch thou in all things, endure affliction. As you go forth, there might be some unexpected challenges, endure affliction. As you go forth, there may be unexpected resistance, endure affliction. As you go forth, there may be unexpected opposition, endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. You are a Timothy. A pastor, do the work of an evangelist too. Or you are a teacher of the word, like Timothy, like Titus, do the work of an evangelist too. You happen to be an elder and you happen to be a leader in the church of the living God. Do the work of an evangelist too. Or you are just one of the members of the body of Christ, a real child of God, a brother, a sister. Watch thou in all things. That's for everyone. That's for everyone. The Lord wants everyone to be watchful. Endure affliction. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That's for everyone. And do the work of an evangelist, the work of a soul winner, the work of a witness unto the Lord. He wants every one of the members of the body of Christ to be a witness unto the Lord. Be a witness, be a soul winner, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. What will happen if we do as we do, when we do what the Lord has called upon us to do? He'll confirm the word. Even from your mouth, he'll confirm the word. In your ministry, he'll confirm the word. Let's come back to Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 20. Mark Chapter 16, we're reading from verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking was them. That the promise he has given, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. The Lord walking with them, we're walkers together with God. The Lord walking out with them, we're laborers together with God. That's the promise he has given. If we obey his word and we spread the gospel and we preach the gospel and we touch every life and touch everyone where we are and where we go, he has promised he will be with us. It will work with us. His power will avail in our lives, will be available for us. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word or signs following. Supernatural so confirmation of his word and confirming the word or signs following. It's the word he confirms. It may be a young person speaking that word. He confirms the word. It may be a man, a woman speaking that word, he confirms the word. It may be an elder, an evangelist speaking that word, he confirms the word. It may be a preacher, a pastor speaking that word, he confirms the word. It might be a priest or just any of the people who are washed and cleansed and has made us kings and priests unto our God. He confirms the word. What am I saying? I'm saying it is not the title of the person who speaks the word. It's not the title that brings confirmation. It is not the experience of the person who speaks the word. It's not the experience that is confirmed. And it is not the uh, ability of the person who speaks the word. It's not the ability that is confirmed. It's the word. The word, the word of grace, the word of the gospel, the word of God. It is the word that is confirmed. It is not your emotion that is confirmed. It's not your feeling that is confirmed. It's not your, you know, whatever, you know, you stand and the way you stand, you stand with authority. It's not your authority that is confirmed. It is the word. If you will forget about your feeling, 
Forget about your emotion. Forget about anything concerning you and understand the word is higher than you are and the word is greater than you are and you speak the word of God faithfully. They went forth. You too will go forth and they preach everywhere and you too will preach everywhere and the Lord will walk with you confirming his word of signs following it will be done in Jesus name I want you to look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 we're looking at verse 3 Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 we're looking at verse 3 it says long time therefore about thee speaking boldly in the Lord he was speaking the word of God which gave testimony unto the word Look at that, which gave testimony unto the word. It's not their personality. It's not their power. It's not their authority. It's not their title. The Lord gave testimony. He gave confirmation unto the word of his grace and granted many signs and wonders to be done by their hands in the confirmation of the word that they spoke. Now, as we have read all this, let's come back now to Mark chapter 16. We're reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. This command, the command of the Lord to you, to me, and to everyone. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will protect you. He said unto them, He saying unto us, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel and preach the gospel unto every creature. Don't preach condemnation. Preach the gospel. Preach the grace of God. Preach the goodness of God. Preach what Christ has accomplished for everyone. Preach the salvation of God. The gospel of salvation to every creature. Then in verse 16, it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Preach persuasively and preach convincingly and preach believingly so that the people will take the word of God and believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. In verse 17, he assures us that these signs shall follow them and these signs shall follow you and these signs shall follow us as we believe in my name, in the name of Christ shall they cast out devils. They your time has come, they shall speak with new tongues. Your time has come. In verse 18, it says, And they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Your life will be preserved, your life will be protected. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Then in verse 19, it says, So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, it was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God interceding for you now he sat on the right hand of God to confirm his own word that he spoke when he was here on earth he sat on the on the right hand of God to affirm to confirm the authority of the word in the mouth of every believer and then in verse 20 now it says and they went forth and preached everywhere and we are going forth and preaching everywhere. Don't lock up yourself in one corner of your house afraid there's nothing to fear. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. That's what the Lord will do through every one of us. And the Lord will do it through you. The Lord walking with them in your family. The Lord walking with them in your community. The Lord walking with them on the field of evangelism, the Lord working with them in the local church, the Lord working with them. Anywhere you go, you go in faith. You go in the name of the Lord. You go with the authority, the anointing, and the power of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord will walk with you. The Lord working with them and confirming the word for signs following. The Lord is following after you and the Lord is going with you and every word you speak about him, every word you speak against the devil, 
against demons, against diseases, and you speak that word in the authority or the confidence you have in the name of our Savior, of our Lord, the Lord will confirm that word for signs following. Signs will follow after me. I said signs will follow after me. Signs will follow after you in Jesus' name. It will be a sign carrying believer. Mountains will move before you. And difficulties will melt before you. Every challenge you face, everything will melt away. The Lord will confirm his word in your mouth in Jesus' name. A good amen. A real amen. Affirmed, affirming amen. Amen in your life, in your ministry, in our church, in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer. He's uh, giving us so much today concerning supernatural sins, signs, following believers until the end. Until the end of our lives, my brother, my sister, until the end of this dispensation, until the end of this period, the signs will follow after believers. And the signs will follow you in particular. It's good to look up to other people, but also look at the grace of God in your life, the gift of God in your life, the calling of God in your life, and bring forth consecration that matches the calling, and bring forth the going that matches the grace of God in your life, and say, Lord, I will. I will not be hearers of the word only, I will not be a hearer of the word only. I will be a doer of the word. And as you do, God will not fail in your life. He'll walk with you. He'll walk with God. Christ and his name will not fail in your life. That name will avail. And that name will manifest authority and power in your life. And as you go, as you preach the gospel, you have converts, you follow up disciples, the disciple people, and you will contribute to the progress of the church, the increase of the church, the multiplication of the church in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word you have spoken to us and taught us today. We thank you, Lord, for your name that you have given us. And we know the power, the privilege we have in this name. We know the possibilities, the privilege we have in the name. And Lord, we know that even at this present hour, at this present moment, that name cannot fail and will not fail. And when we mention the name of Jesus, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We pray, Lord, that you grant us real unshakable faith, not in our feeling, real unshakable faith, not in our emotion, real unshakable faith in that unfailing name of Jesus. Every time we preach, every time we proclaim the word, every time we publish the gospel, every time we intercede for anyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that same consecration that the early church had, and they knew that with that consecration, they were to do your will. They were to preach the gospel. And they went everywhere preaching the gospel, and you walked with them. I pray, Lord, you'll walk with every one of us as believers, every one of us as preachers, every one of us as witnesses, every one of us as watchmen, workmen, every one of us as preachers, proclaimers of the gospel. In Jesus' name, according to your promise, Lord, we accept and we believe, we affirm that these signs will follow after us as we're moving out and we're preaching your word that the gospel of grace and we're preaching that confidently lord we pray anywhere we go no demon will be able to stand before us with your power the anointing you help us we cast out devils in jesus name and lord we pray we'll speak with new tongues new tongues of power 
not a tongue of weakness, a new tongue of authority, and not uh, of uh, defeat, will speak with new tongues, the new tongues of fire that will burn every sinner that is of the enemy, every chaff of the flesh, the new tongue will burn everything up in Jesus' name, and all Satan's serpents, Lord, will take them up and throw them away, will trample upon them, they will not walk on us, they will not live in us, but all those serpentine spirits will have authority over them and will walk over them in Jesus' name. And Lord, you preserve the lives of your people as we go about, as we preach your word, as we go everywhere, every village, every town, every city, every community, whatever we drink, Lord, we pray that none of those things we eat or drink will have any harm, any hurt on any of us in in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, no moment, no minute, no day of our life will be cut short. We pray poison will not cut the lives of your children up. In Jesus' name, we'll live to the full of our days. And then uh, when we're challenged uh, to pray for the sick, as we lay hands on the sick, as we speak the word against the sickness, against the infirmity, Lord, we pray according to your promise they shall recover. No matter the sickness, no matter how deep, how high, how great, how long-standing that mountain of sickness might be, oh Lord, they will recover in Jesus' name. Even now, Lord, I pray, as we believe your word, as we stand on your word, every sickness I command, get out in Jesus' name. And Lord, give us the faithfulness and give us the consecration and give us, Lord, the commitment that everywhere we go, we'll go forth preaching your word. And everywhere as we preach your word, you will confirm the word with salvation. Confirm the word with sanctification. Confirm the word with the power of the Holy Ghost. Confirm the word with signs and wonders of healing and deliverance everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, Lord, raise up your church as an army, as an army of evangelists, an army of preachers, an army of witnesses, an army of people that go everywhere to uplift the name of Christ, preach the word of Christ, preach the word of salvation, and many will turn to the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Lord, you grant us more assurance, you grant us more confirmation. We'll not be hearers of the word only, we'll be doers of the word. And the blessing that follows after doers of the word will follow after every one of us, because faithful, Lord, make us fruitful, and Lord, we pray, we'll do your work the way it ought to be done, and great will be the good result of the work we do for the glory of God. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you, and the Lord make you obedient to the word and faithful to the Lord. And the Lord confirm the word as we preach the word of salvation. Thank you. God bless you.